Welcome. I'd like to introduce Virginie and Ola, who are helping me demonstrate this part of the practice. What I'm going to go through, and you guys can help, will be to demonstrate the effectiveness of using the four main principles that I've talked about, which I consider to be the fundamentals of an effective yoga practice that will differentiate yoga from just doing a workout. So the first of these is to move actively. Second, to move from your core. Third, to learn how to breathe naturally as the first place to breathe. And then the fourth is to move fluidly in three-dimensional space. So let's explore these one at a time. The first of them is to move actively. So what I'd like you to compare is a standard posture that you often see in many yoga classes. And then by moving actively, I'll get you to feel the difference perhaps and see if you can feel this difference. So what I'd like you to try first is to do the standard downward facing dog pose. So come onto your mat and do a downward facing dog pose. And just, I'll allow you to feel that for a few moments and notice if you feel stiff in any way, how it feels on your neck, your shoulders, etc. And then come back up. Now, what I'd like to give you is a set of simple spinal movements because essentially all of the practice has to do with your spine as probably the most fundamental and important part of your body. And that's also a fundamental in practice. I mean, we'd love to have strong arms and strong legs, but really, if I had to put it very bluntly, if you had to lose your arms and legs, you would still survive. But if you had to lose your spine and lose your trunk, you wouldn't survive. So I think the trunk and the spine and how it moves are the most important things. So along the way, we're also going to practice eight basic spinal movements of bending forward and backward, side to side, and then twisting left to right, and also lengthening and shortening. So the dog pose is one of the ones that gives the lengthening practice. So follow my clicks and movements. Start, and the rest who are watching can do this too, and you'll feel then practically what I'm talking about. So join us if you can. Start with your knees a little bit bent, then drop the sitting bones down. Imagine the sitting bones are like a weight on a string, which is your spine. Then move the body weight forward over the front of the feet, which will trigger the pelvic floor to work at the perineum and initiate the beginning of Mula Bandha. Then relax the abdomen. Abdomen relaxed, stay relaxed, and don't overstretch, over tense, or over breathe. Follow my clicks and movements. Lengthen the lower back, then the upper back, Move the pubic bone forward, then lift the shoulders as far as you comfortably can. Check the neck can move, check the fingers can move. Then, subject to your level of comfort, take the arms up as high as you can. And then from that position, take the fingers higher, sitting bones lower. Check your fingers can move, check your shoulders can move, check your neck can move, and check your tummy can comfortably breathe. And then from this position, we allow a few moments, and if you spend even up to 30 seconds, you'll find you can start to go a little bit deeper. Don't force, but if you can, feel the difference between having the shoulders down, bring the shoulders down, ideally bring the shoulders forward and up. Now you don't want to over tense, but the higher up you can go, the more you can lengthen, the more heat starts to come in the body and you'll start to feel the body become warm. Now if I can come to assist and adjust you in this practice, that will help other people understand. So if that's okay, if I can come to assist and adjust you, if anything I do with you doesn't feel right, let me know, please. So from this position, move the sitting bones down and forward and the top of the hips back. So you lengthen the lower back. Move the lower front ribwards backwards and lift and lengthen the upper back. Now relax the abdomen fully, so you let your belly expand like a baby's belly. I know it doesn't look nice in the beginning, but it's about how it feels. Now if you can, take your shoulders forward and up higher. Taking the arms upwards will give you length in your spine. Taking the armpits forward can release your neck. So take your fingers to lengthen more, check they can move. Take your shoulders to lift more if you can, shoulders slightly forward to release the neck, Check the neck is free. Lengthen your spine by lowering the sitting bones. Now expand the tummy and take a gentle in-breath to the abdomen. And then bring your arms forward and down. Now, could you notice the body warm up? The body gets hot, but check there's not an increase in the pulse rate. So what you've got is an increase in circulation recognized by warmth. 
but not so much heart racing. So this starts to move energy and information through the body. Now what I'd like you to do is see, did that give you flexibility? Come into a dog pose again and see if having done that, which was the shape of the dog pose from here upwards, but without having to stretch the back of the legs. And then notice if it feels a bit easier. And I can see you go down a little bit easier. And I think it feels a bit easier. Just nod if you felt that. Yes? Okay, so, uh, so you're feeling a little bit easier to be in the pose. Now stay there a bit longer, and then what I'll ask you to do is do the same instructions that I gave you while you were standing up. And those instructions were push the sitting bones down, move the top of the hips back, and lengthen the lower back. Move the lower front ribs inwards and backwards and lift the length of the upper back. Then expand the abdomen. Breathe into the abdomen. I'll say them again. Push the sitting bones down, lift the top of the hips up and lengthen the lower back. Move the lower front ribs inwards and upwards, lift and lengthen the upper back. Now expand the abdomen so that you can see the navel. The navel is the drishti, the place that makes this pose sensible. Now that is a way that I think the pose will work better to allow energy to flow. But now let's try the opposite set of instructions and see whether this leads to a different effect. Lift the sitting bones up. That will start to overstretch the hips. Bring the top of the hips down and that will compress the front of the hips. And it shortens the lower back. Sitting bones up, top of hips down, shortens the lower back. Now pull the navel in toward the spine and that will create tension and lock the core. And then open your heart center from the front and that will start to, it actually starts to compress the shoulders. So you hear those instructions in many exercise stretch classes, but they won't give you yoga. So once again, do what I said first. Sitting bones push down, top of the hips lift up, lengthen the lower back, release the hips. Then lower front ribs move up, away from the floor, round out the upper back, and that frees up the shoulders. Then expand the belly. Breathe into the belly and check that your navel would be visible if you weren't wearing clothes. Then stand back up. Good. Can you tell me perhaps, did the dog pose feel easier when you got into it the first time? This posture will give you the benefits of dog pose without the risk and stretch of or the risk of overstretching the shoulders, for example. And did you find that the instructions I gave you in two extreme forms were better the first and last way, not the middle way? Fantastic. So those instructions were again with me again, arms up. So I'm saying that if you're doing a dog pose, if you're teaching a dog pose, practicing, it may be easier to do the dog pose from here upwards and move the sitting bones forward, top of the hips back, lengthen the lower back, ribs back back, lift the upper back and bring the shoulders forward and up. Then check, fingers can move, shoulders can move, neck can move and the tummy can breathe. Bring the arms forward and down. Fantastic. Now, the second practice we'll do is the one to do with bending forward. So when we bend forward, there's a lot of people who think that it's all about yoga Yoga is, ooh, I can't do yoga because I can't touch my toes. Many people actually think that they can't do a yoga practice because they can't touch the toes. There is an obsession about stretching the back of the legs. So let's see if you want hamstring flexibility, what can make it easier, what makes it harder. So just follow me if you can. Left leg back, right leg forward. Make your legs straight and don't tense any muscles. Just simply come forward by bending at the hips and if comfortable, hands on thighs, relax your legs, keep the chin up, and then if you can, take the hands on the leg or perhaps on the floor. Keep the chin up in this exercise. With the chin up, you're not stretching the nerves in the back of the neck. Now feel how this feels, and the rest following can also do this. Then bend the knee and stand back up. And what you probably experience then, because we're not warmed up, is a sense that it's a, a bit of a stretch. Now remember, stretch is the first step before pain, which is the step just before injury. So can you do that posture without feeling the stretch? So you have flexibility without the risk of internal discomfort or pain or injury. So one of the ways of doing it is moving actively and being in this shape, but without just falling into it with gravity, which is how we mainly come in like that. Rather, the same shape is here. So let's work towards that shape. So lean on your left leg, come to the right toe tip, and open the palms. Now look at the floor for balance. Grip with your left toes for balance and bend the standing leg for balance. Then from there, lengthen and relax. So lengthen your fingers, check the shoulders are free, 
check the neck is free, check your tummy can breathe. Then stay here or, if comfortable, we're going to lift the leg off the floor. Three things will help you balance with the leg off the floor. One is look at the floor for balance. Two is bend the standing leg slightly. And three is grip with your toes. So stay there or look at the floor for balance, bend the standing leg for balance, and grip with the toes for balance. Now from that position, check you are lengthened but relaxed. Check your fingers are lengthened but they can move. Check your shoulders are apart but they're also free. Lengthen the skin of the lower back. Check you can breathe into the tummy. Check your neck is lengthened but it can move also. Now check your toes can move. Can you relax more? Don't try and tense more. Check you can relax any unnecessary tension, let it go. Now if you're comfortable, go a bit higher but keep the knee straight. If it's bending, go lower. If it's comfortable, higher. What you'll also find is if you turn your thigh outwards, try that, that's easier for most people. Turn your thigh inwards, it tends to jam the front of the hip. So turn the thigh outwards and check the fingers can move, the shoulders can move, the neck can move and the tummy can breathe and you're calm. Now notice you're getting warmer without the heart racing, but also it's giving you flexibility. So take the leg forward if you can and see if that pose has helped you go forward. So keep the chin up and go into the pose to the same place you were before and notice, is it easier? Lift the chin up and you'll find that makes it a little bit different. Then go forward if you can from your chest with your chin up. Bend the knee, stand back up. Lovely. Was it easier to go forward? Fantastic. And so you also got blood flow. The body was feeling warm now because this active movement actually promotes blood flow without the heart racing. And I didn't tell you to tense any muscles. In fact, all I was saying when we we're in the air was just to relax. But it's a posture which will make you stronger. So this posture makes you strong. This posture, the same shape, if you relax, you get no strength at all. Let's try the second leg. So in the second leg, take left leg forward, right leg back. Then from that position, we're gonna go in the pose, but I'm gonna ask you to go a bit quicker. It's not that yoga is wrong to do fast, but if you move faster, you're more likely to stimulate a stretch reflex. So experience that if you can do it safely. Leg straight, spine straight, everything relaxed, and then just go forward. And notice how stiff this side feels. Notice the effect of bringing chin in toward the chest. That will stimulate a nerve tensioning in the back of the neck. Chin up, it's a lot less stress. So let's do it with the chin up. Then bend the knee and stand back up. So that felt stiff that side, didn't it? Because we didn't move actively into the pose. We fell into the pose. Active movements are a big thing you can use to promote better practice. So this time, right leg back, left leg forward, bend the standing leg, Look at the floor for balance, grip with your right toes, open the palms. Lengthen and relax. Fingers can move, shoulders can move, neck can move, tummy can breathe and you're calm. Stay there or lift the left leg. Look at the floor for balance, grip with your right toes for balance, bend the right knee for balance. Check the toes can move. Check your fingers can move. Check your shoulders can move. Your neck can move and your tummy can breathe. If the knee is bending, go a bit lower. Don't try and straighten them. Don't try and tense the leg. Keep it relaxed but straight. And keeping it relaxed but straight means the front of the thigh becomes active, which relaxes the back of the thigh. Front of the hip is active. You can feel it with your fingers. The front of the hip is active. That makes the front of the back of the hip relax. So one muscle turning on, the muscles at the front turn on, forces the back to relax. This inhibits the stretch reflex. So then check, your fingers can move, your neck can move, your tummy can breathe and you're calm. Turn the left thigh out, you'll find it's easier in the hip. Turn the left thigh in and a lot more stress comes to the inner hip thigh. So left thigh turns out and now you're getting warm without the heart racing. You're developing strength while I'm telling you to relax and you're developing flexibility on one side and relaxation on that side. Put the leg on the floor and bend forward and see if you can feel the difference. Bend the knee, stand back up. Good. You could feel the difference? Fantastic. Okay, so this is another example. Now let's practice what it's like to bend forward in a full Uttanasana. Okay, so the next pose I'd like you to try is the one that's done as the second posture usually in things like Salute to the Sun. So start with your knees a little bit bent and then from that position take the hands to the floor and if comfortable 
take your hands on your calves and bring your chin in and lengthen the back of the body. Then if comfortable, straighten the legs. And just see how that feels. And then stand back up. Now even though we stretch the back of the legs, now stretching the spine, you still feel a little bit stiff. And as soon as you start feeling uncomfortable, the yoga stops and the exercise starts. So maybe one thing you can do before you do this pose, or as an alternative to that pose, is to simply make the spine bend forward actively. So let's try that. So from this position, start with the knees a bit bent, then push the sitting bones forward and up, the top of the hips back, lengthen the lower back, ribs back, lift the upper back, then expand the belly and move the shoulders forward, turn the shoulders in and lengthen the wrists. Now from that position, with belly expanded, move your throat forward, chin up. So I'll adjust again, throat forward, chin up, like that. And by expanding the belly, that frees the neck up. Make sure the neck is comfortable. So shoulders forward and down, back lengthened, and adjust so your hips are not behind, the hips are under the collarbone. Take your fingers and feel the abdomen for a moment. So put your fingers in the abdomen. Now move the hips back and notice the abdomen goes softer. Now keep your collarbone where it is and move the hips under the collarbone and you might feel the tummy firm a little bit. But check, can you breathe into the abdomen? Breathe into the abdomen. And then if possible, the front is firm, but the sides should be softer. When you breathe naturally, that will help that happen. Check the fingers can move, the neck can move, move the groin forward if you can, ribs back, and the throat forward, chin up, so you're not stretching the nerves. Breathe into the abdomen. And then release come back up. All right, now see if that, which you feel, it sometimes releases the lower back. Many people feel that after lower back pain goes. Did you feel any of that sensation of a release in the lower back? And nine out of 10 normal adults are pinched here, and that can relieve. Even though it looks like a funny pose, it can actually give you a lot less discomfort than if you lift up the chest and pull the shoulders back and down. Did it give you flexibility in a forward bend? Try, bend the knees, bend forward. Then bring your palms to your calves if you can, and bring your chin in towards your throat if comfortable. And you can place your palms on your calves if you wish, like that, here. And then bring the chin in toward the throat. See if you can straighten the legs, but don't force. Stand back up. Okay, it looked like you went a bit further in the pose more easily. Was that true for you? Fantastic. Okay, understand that not everyone who I give these uh, instructions to is going to feel better with the things I say, but after decades of experience, what I'm offering you is the best ways to work for most people most of the time on a physical level, physiological level, and mental level, both while they're practicing and after their practice. And after that practice means not just in the relaxation afterwards, but also next day. And if you continue this type of practice for say 10 or 20 years, because that's what you look for, not just instant gratification, but a long-term benefit. All right, now another thing that has to do with forward bending is when we're doing a salute to the sun, or when we're doing the commonly done vinyasa movement, one of the most common movements is the possibility of lifting up in the air into a half handstand and eventually full handstand. So if I want to come back to a push up and an upward facing dog, I'll cross my legs and then from that position I lift into the air. And here I breathe in. And then push up position, breathe out. Upward facing dog, breathe in. Downward facing dog, breathe out. And then go forward again on an inhalation to balance on the arms. Now most people can't do that. And so often people skip it. But the ability to do it and the understanding of why you do it makes a big difference to your practice. But notice the shape of my lifting in the air was that shape. If you can make that shape, you'll find even things like lifting up into handstand are easier. And for that, I can ask you all to come and practice. Can you do a handstand against the wall? Can you do a freestanding handstand lifting up slowly in the middle of the room? Can you? Show me. No, 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 no. Come back down. I want you to lift up slowly. No, it's a bit harder. So rather than throwing the legs up, which is a little bit like if you had a bottle and you threw it and then what the chances are of it landing on the right end. 
So if you place the bottle, it's going to balance more easily. But if you kick your legs up, it's a bit like throwing the bottle, expecting it to land. So let's see if we can practice that. At least you can do a handstand against the wall, so I know you're safe to try this. Place your hands on the floor if you can. And now from that position, bring the shoulders towards my knees and don't go further than my knees. And my knees are just here to support you if you need. Then push the sitting bones down and lift the top of the hips up, lengthen the lower back. Move the lower front ribs inwards and upwards and lift and lengthen the upper back. Then, can I touch your abdomen? Push your abdomen against my hands. Then from there, breathe into the abdomen and as you breathe in, Notice if you sense the body can more appropriately lift up, then come back down. Lovely. That felt pretty easy for you to lift up. What I'd like to try now is give you a different set of instructions and see if you notice a difference in the practice. So put your hands on the floor again, please. Then from that position, again, bring your shoulders towards my knees. And this time I'll give you instructions that sometimes people teach. Push the sitting bones up and bring the top of the hips down. Fold forward from the hips. This instruction is not wrong, but in this case, it makes it more difficult. Then pull the navel in toward your spine and expand your chest. Then, instead of breathing in while you lift up, I want you to exhale, contract your abdomen. Then take a deep breath into the chest as you try and lift up. And <laughs> what happens? nothing. There's absolutely no power. So by actually saying push the sitting bones up, by pulling the tummy in, opening the chest and breathing in the chest, you lose the power. So let's do the first one again. But can I suggest that when you lift the legs up, it's much easier if you bend the knees. When you feel your body lift, bend the knees. So one more time if you can. Palms flat, fingers grip, bring the shoulders forward toward my knees. Then raise the heels and push the sitting bones down. Lift the top of the hips up and lengthen the lower back. Move the lower front ribs inwards and upwards and round out the upper back. Then expand the belly. Expand the belly. Push the belly down toward my hand. Push the belly into my hand. Push down my hand. Then breathe into the abdomen. Let the knees bend a little bit. And then from that position, notice the handstand comes a lot easier and balance is even easier. Now come back down, knees to the chest and stand back up. So could you feel the difference in power just by changing those instructions? Thank you. Okay, beautiful. Eugenie, can we come back? The next movement I'd like you to practice is the bending backwards ac action. So the bending backwards one is the one that we do in poses like the upward facing dog pose. So if it feels okay for you to do, I'd like you to try an upward facing dog pose. So from this position, kneel if you wish, and then move the hips down towards your hands if comfortable, lift the knees off the floor if comfortable, and expand to do the upward facing dog pose. And then just note how it feels. Note how easy it is to collapse in this pose. If you wish, gently collapse a little bit and see how a pinching may tend to come. Now come back to a kneeling position, and just stretch back for a moment and stand up. Okay, the upward facing dog pose and most bending backward poses can be the most uncomfortable movements for many people who begin a yoga practice. And part of the reason is because we sit so long in chairs, the front of the hips get compressed, and if the front of the hips are compressed from sitting on chairs, when you stand up, you stand up like this. But people want to see where they're going. So to stand up straight, they squash the lower back. And so most people in the modern world sit for five to 15 hours a day since childhood, and this leads to a profound compression of the lower back, which if you come to a yoga class, having not led the natural lifestyle of someone, say, in traditional ancient India, where they don't sit on chairs, where they walk all day, then upward facing dog can be threatening and uncomfortable. So if you can do an, an upward facing dog movement without collapsing, it can be a lot better. So I'd like you to try two types of bending backward from standing. So start with your knees a little bit bent. Then from that position, push the sitting bones down and forward and move the top of the hips back and lengthen the skin of the lower back. So if you grab the skin of your lower back, just stand up straight, try and grab some skin. Then if you bend the knees 
and push the sitting bones forward and the top of the hips back, you'll find it's harder to grab the skin. Then if you expand the belly, it's harder still. Then from that position, move the groin forward, top of the hips back, lift the collarbone and drop the tailbone. Then expand the belly and the chest, take your shoulders back, palms open and the chin in, neck back. So the chin in, neck back. So you're looking for expansion at the front, jaw relaxed, fingers can move, shoulders can move, neck can move, tummy can breathe and you're calm. And then stand back up. Any pain or discomfort in your lower back? It felt okay. That can give you the feeling of upward facing dog without causing problems. Now what can go wrong is instead of lengthening the front of the body, often people shorten the back. Now from the front it doesn't look much different, but look from the side when I do these movements. This is a fairly safe for everyone expanding the front posture. This is a painful squashing the back posture for many people. And perhaps you can see the difference. Here I expand the front of my body bending backwards. Here I shorten the back of my body bending backwards. Here I expand and lengthen the front. Generally causes no pain in most people. But if I lift the sitting bones and pull the shoulders back and down, the back becomes compressed, which in nine out of 10 modern adults will tend to cause pain or dysfunction or discomfort. So let's see if you can try this way, which I won't call wrong, because some people are okay with it, but nine out of 10 will feel dysfunction. So from where you are now, stand with your knees a bit bent, and careful anyone trying this who has got back pain, do it gently. Knees bent, let's shorten the back of the body. Sitting bones backward and up, shoulders backward and down, and see how that feels. And then generally, there's more skin to pinch, and the back starts to feel a bit compressed, like that. Come back up. So that's not a wrong movement, but nine out of 10 people will experience pain. And often that will happen very easily in an upward facing dog pose. So if you can find a way of doing it without bending backwards and squashing, it's much better. But to teach it's difficult. So rather than upward facing dog pose, a simple alternative is the pose we did first. Let's try it again. Knees bent. Rather than shortening the back, let's lengthen the front. Push the sitting bones down and forward, and the top of the hips back, lengthen the lower back, ribs back, lift the upper back, lower the sitting bones, then from there expand the belly and chest, pull the shoulders back, have your chin in, jaw relaxed, open the palms, and lengthen the front of the wrist and the lung meridian. Breathe into the abdomen, and make a passive breath out. And then what you can feel perhaps is the front of the abdomen will feel firm to touch. Just check the front of the abdomen. There's a bit of firmness there. But you should be able to breathe comfortably into your abdomen still if you think relaxed. Now has this given you a sense of flexibility, a sense of strengthening, a sense of warming? Come out of the pose by lengthening the lower back and then bring the arms down and come into an upward facing dog pose again. So do your upward facing dog like you did before and see if that has created any ease in the pose. Come into the pose as you wish. Lovely. And then come out of the pose as you wish. Good. And then did that feel any easier the second time you did the upward facing dog? A little bit easier. So what I'm looking for when, when I'm doing this posture is here my front is firm. My sides are completely soft. I'm breathing naturally and using the rectus abdominis to hold me in place. This is easy to do when you're leaning back but in an upward facing dog pose I'm looking for the same thing. Here the front of my body is firm. The sides are completely relaxed. For most people an upward facing dog has either everything tense which creates stress or everything relaxed, which will offer me the lower back pinches. So let's work with the next one. The next one is learning how to bend sideways. So a commonly practiced sideways bend in modern yoga is called Parshva Konasan. So I'd like you to try this first, and then I'll give you a method of using active movement to make it easier and more accessible. So start at the front of your mat, bend the knee slightly, and step the left leg back. Then bring your right elbow on your right knee, and take the left arm over the head and then stay there or if comfortable bring the right hand to the floor and look up at the left fingers if comfortable and feel how it feels for a few moments then stand back up okay so 
That posture is commonly taught and practiced. I could give you a series of instructions that will actually make it feel better, but usually those instructions are quite complex for people to understand. So can you get the same effect without stress? Try this position. Start with the knees bent and lengthen the lower back and the upper back. Then take the shoulders up and forward, stay there, and the arms forward and down. Relax the face, relax the throat, everything relaxed. Now we're going to move the left lower back. Left lower back lengthen, left shoulder lift, left elbow lift. Bring the shoulders apart. Then bring the hands apart. So now we've lengthened the left side of the body without shortening the right. So notice my head is above my hips. Then keeping the back of the body lengthened, the left shoulder forward and up, and the abdomen feeling relaxed. Taking the left arm higher, if you can, check the fingers can move. Check the shoulders can move. Check the neck can move and the tummy can breathe and you're calm. I call it reach the top shelf asana. So from this position, keeping the back long, left side wrong, long, now lengthen the outside of the left hip, move the hips to the left side. Then from that position, push the shoulders apart, relax the throat. Check the fingers are lengthened but can move. Shoulders are apart but they're free. Neck is lengthened but it can also freely move. The spine is lengthened but the tummy can also breathe. Stay there or come to the right toe tip. Then from that position, again, all the weights in the left leg, look at the floor for balance. Stay there or push the right hip forward and up. Stay there or lift up the right knee. And then from that position, we're resembling the posture that we just did. Soft throat, the face and eyes, neck relaxed, fingers can move, tummy can breathe and you're calm. And then come back down. And that makes you warm, but without the heart racing. It gives you flexibility without stretching. It gives you strength without asking you to tense up. See if it made flexibility. Take your right leg forward, left leg back, right elbow down, bring the left side of the back to lengthen. If comfortable, take the right hand down. Keep the back long and expand the belly, chest and throat. And see if that feels easier. Push on the foot, stand back up. Did that feel a little bit easier? Much easier, hopefully. All right, let's try the next side. So I'm going to ask you to go straight in the left side of the pose and see if you can notice how the left side will feel stiffer than the right side was just then. So start with the left leg forward, right leg back. Then put the left elbow, left knee. Take the right arm up over the head and it'll feel like a stiffness stretch. Take the left hand down if you wish. And there's probably stiffness. Stand back up. It feels stiff compared to the first side. So can we do the active version of the posture, which requires little instruction? So from this position, start. Back, lengthen. Stay there. Arms forward and down. Relax. Then from there, lengthen the right lower back. Right hip drop, right lower back lift. Keep the head above the tailbone, right elbow lift. Shoulders apart, relax the throat. Hands apart, check the neck is free. Right hand high, left hand lower. Keep the back long. Keep the right side long. Keep the front of the hips open and the belly relaxed. Take the right arm higher, left arm lower. Stay there or with the back lengthened, right side of trunk lengthened. Focus on lengthening the right hip by moving the hips to the right. Then from there, shoulders apart, relax the throat. Fingers can move, shoulders can move, neck can move. Stay there or come to the left toe tip. Then keep the back long and if comfortable, push the left hip forward and up. You may even feel the left side firm, but the right side should stay relaxed. Try and relax more. Then stay there or look at the floor for balance. Grip with the right toes for balance and stay there or lift up the left leg. Now we've got the shape of Parshvokanasana, either in the air or on the floor, whichever is best for you. Check the fingers are lengthened but can move. Shoulders apart but they can move. Neck lengthened but it can move. Spine lengthened but the tummy can breathe. You're calm. Focus on relax. But it's an active movement which creates blood flow, flexibility and strength without heart racing, stress or stretch or tension. Then. Take the left leg down, right leg back, come into the pose 
and see if the posture feels easier. Release, stand back up. Easier. Okay, fantastic. So now I'd like to give you the sensation of twisting because there's four main movements of the spine. Lengthening, shortening, we've done. Forward and backward bending, we've done. Bending side to side, now twisting. And a commonly practiced twisting posture is Parvita Trikonasana. So I'd like you to take the right leg forward, left leg back. Bend the right leg a little bit at the start. Then reach your left hand to the floor on the big toe side of the foot. Take your right arm to the ceiling if you can. If the body is flexible enough, straighten the right leg. Stay there or take your left hand to the little toe side of the foot and stay there or look up at the right hand. And even though we've done a little bit of a warm up already, this posture probably makes you feel stiff. Look down, bend the right knee, pushing the foot stand back up. And there's probably a bit of stiffness there. It's not something you die to get into first thing in the morning. So can you do an active movement which brings you to the place a little bit easier? So start with your knees a little bit bent and lengthen the back of the body. Stay there, take the arms up and forward and down. Then relax. Twisting should happen from the lower abdomen. So take the lower abdomen and keeping head and hips still, turn the navel to the right side, lengthening the back of the body. Move the groin forward and expand the belly, then the chest, and take the right arm to turn up. Look towards me with the left ear lifted, chin in slightly. And so your neck's on a slight slope. Keep the back long, keep the head above the tailbone, and then from that position, stay here or move from the hips. Twist the hips to the right. Now if there's discomfort in the knees, either don't move the hips or get a sense that you're squeezing the right heel in, which will tighten your right thigh. Squeeze the left big toe in, which tightens the left thigh. And that can protect your knees a little bit, but the best way of not hurting your knees is by not doing it if it's uncomfortable. Then from that position, check again. Fingers are lengthened, but they can move. Shoulders apart, but they can move. Neck lengthened, but the neck is also free. Spine lengthened, but the tummy can also breathe. Stay there or shift the weight to the left leg. Take the right leg forward. Stay there or make the navel rotate to the right. Make your pubic bone rotate to the left. And stay there or look at the floor for balance. Grip with the left toes for balance. Stay there or pubic bone up, belly down. Pubic bone to left, belly to right. Stay there or lift the right leg off the floor. And check once again. Fingers are lengthened but can move. Shoulders apart, shoulders can move. Neck lengthened but it can move. Trunk lengthened but check your tummy can breathe naturally. Then from that position, bend the elbows, bend the knees and come back down. Notice it creates warmth without the heart racing. Notice your body gets stronger from doing it, but the emphasis just then was relax. Has it made you more flexible? Try. Take right leg forward, left leg back, bend the right knee to start, take the left palm to the floor, take the right arm up if comfortable, straighten the right knee if comfortable, and left palm to the little toe side of the foot if comfortable. Look up if you wish. Look down, bend the knee, pushing the foot stand back up. Was it a little bit easier? <laughs> Fantastic. Let's compare that, which we moved actively into just then, with the other side and see if the other side feels a little bit stiffer because we haven't prepared for it. Take the left leg forward, right leg back, bend the left knee if you need and take the right hand down, left hand up, straighten the left leg if you wish, right hand to little toe side of the foot if you wish and probably what you'll find is this side feels stiff. Bend the knee, pushing the foot stand back up. That side feels stiffer than the first side. We didn't prepare for it. So instead, let's move actively into this posture. The actual posture we did just then is not necessary. The active movement is probably more important to learn first. So start. Back, lengthen. Arms go forward and up, then forward and down. Relax. Abdomen relax, move from the lower abdomen, lower trunk. Keep the back lengthened as you twist the body to the left. Keep the head and hips still, lift the arms. Keep the back long, move the hips forward and expand the belly. Then the chest, keep turning to the left side and look towards me 
with your right ear lifted helps the neck stay safer. Lengthen the fingers, check they can move. Push the shoulders apart, check they can move. Lengthen your spine, check the tummy can breathe, your neck can move. Stay there or, having moved the trunk and the shoulders, option, move the hips. Then make it safer for your knees if you wish to squeeze the left heel inwards, tightening the left thigh. Squeeze the right big toe inwards, tightening the right inner thigh if you wish to. If you don't need to, don't. And if you don't wish to move your hips, don't. Don't do anything which causes discomfort or pain. Stay there or shift the weight to the right leg. Stay there or bring the left leg forward. Keep the sitting bones down, top of the hips back, lengthen the lower back. Ribs back, lift and lengthen the upper back. Shoulders apart, relax your throat. Fingers lengthen, check they can move. Now move the navel to the left, move the pubic bone to the right. Move the navel down, move the pubic bone up. Stay there or lift the left leg into the air. Only as high as you can with the leg straight and then lengthen in all directions, but check you're relaxed. Let go of everything you don't need. Now from here the inner armpit is firm, relaxes outer armpit. Inner left hip is firm, relaxes outer left hip. But you're not trying to tense. The body is just moving actively into the position. Check fingers can move, neck can move, tummy can breathe. And here we have the pose. This is enough, but if you wish, you can check. Left leg down, right hand down, and then you're the pose is there. Does it feel easier? Bend the knee, pushing the foot stand back up. All right, feel easier. Feels easier. And so you're getting a sense of flexibility without having to stretch so much, a sense of blood flow without the heart racing, a sense of strength coming to the body without feeling tense, and a sense of intelligence coming to the cells without me having to tell you things like, Pull up your kneecap, press on the front of the foot, push the right hip into the right heel, turn the right thigh outwards, lift the outside right foot, which are all useful instructions which I could instruct with instead, but they become then a head trip, and you become overthinking, which stresses the body out in a different way. So, move actively is the first basic principle. Moving from your core is the next principle. So when I say move from the core, let me give you a couple of examples to show what I mean by move from the core. Here is the core, here is the core. And it's related to the region between pubic bone and navel, pelvic floor and diaphragm, the sides of the hips, the L5S1. This is the Kanda. It's the origination of all 72,000 nadis. In the West, it's considered to be the enteric nervous system, which is a plexus of nerves that's actually larger than the nervous tissue in your spinal cord and bigger than an average cat's brain. Cats are smart. This is where the origination of all our actions should be from. So try something first. Try lifting up your chin. Chin up. Back to normal. Now it's better if you move not so much from your chin, but from your throat. So try. This time, instead of lifting the chin, move your throat forward as you lift your chin up. And head down. And see if that felt a bit better. I'd like you to compare. If you move the throat forward as the chin lifts, it's generally easier. So, throat forward, chin up, try. Now keep the chin up, move your throat backward. And you may notice it doesn't feel nice for your neck. Throat forward, head down. Could you feel the difference? For many people, it won't feel nice to lift the chin up unless the throat's moved forward. But better still is not just take the throat forward, take your core forward. So this time, before you lift the head up, I want you to make your belly go forward and up. Because before any part of the body moves, the core, or at least some part of it, should move in that direction first. So from this position, expand the belly, then the chest. Now move your throat forward, chin up. And then bring the head down, neck back. Did that feel different? Let's just check. We can check by doing the exact opposite. Pull your navel in toward your spine. Then try and lift up the head. And then head back down. Feels better or worse? It doesn't feel as good, does it? Okay, so if you can, before the head lifts, the core lifts. So once again, knees a bit bent. Expand the belly, then the chest, and then throat forward, chin up. And then round out the lower back, and then the head down, neck back. Lovely. So this is one example. There's many examples. Let's try another one. 
moving from the core. I want you to lean on your right leg, come to the left toe tip. Then from that position, imagine you're holding something. Lift up, left knee. Bring it back down. When you lift up your left knee, if you lift it high enough, it's going to make the spine bend forward. Come to the toe tip again. Lift up the left knee, lift up the left knee, bring it to the chest and hug the knee to the chest. Can you notice how the spine had to bend forward to bring the knee to the chest? Okay, so if, come back down, if the spine has to bend forward to bring the knee to the chest, maybe we should bend the spine forward before we bring the knee to the chest. So make the spine move into the place first before the knees bring up in that position. So start onto your left toe tip again. This time before you move, round the back out into a forward bend first. Relax. Then from there, look at the floor for balance. Grip with right toes for balance and with the back bending forward first, now lift up the left knee. And come back down. Does it feel better? Let's check. Let's do the opposite. Stand up straight. Pull in your navel, open the chest. Open the heart center. Fold forward from the hips. Now lift up the left knee. And come back down. It feels stiff, difficult to do. So better way. Bend the knees slightly. Back bends forward first. Everything relaxed. Then lift up the knee. Come back down. Easier. Come to the right leg. So with the right leg, lift up the leg normally. Up, down. And it's a bit heavier. How do we improve it? Move from the core. Round the back out. Relax the abdomen. Push the pubic bone up. Then lift the knee up. Come back down. See if it's easier. Now compare the opposite. Push the pubic bone down and back. Then lift the knee up and the leg will feel heavier. So better, push the pubic bone up, bend the spine forward, relax, lift the knee up. Come back down. Good. This is what it means to move from the core. Many examples are possible and we'll do some of them in the practice as well. Next thing, learn to breathe naturally as the first place to breathe. Now, any fancy breathing is possible, but is it going to cause more stress or less stress? So what you want first is to always check in any position, like it says in the Ashtanga Yoga Treatise of Patanjali, before you attempt any pranayama, check that you're established in asana. So focus on making the posture firm but calm, stira sukham asanam, before you do any fancy breathing. And if you're not doing fancy breathing, what sort of breathing should you do? The breathing we learned as children. That's called natural breathing and it has five features. Breathe in to your abdomen. Breathe out passively. There's not much natural breathing. It's invisible, inaudible breath. You can forget about natural breathing. It happens by itself, like when you're asleep, and it's through the nose. So let's try natural breathing and compare it to forced unnatural breathing. Not saying any fancy breathing is wrong, but first at least re-establish the possibility of natural breathing. Put your hand on the abdomen, hand on the chest, and use the hands as biofeedback. Keep the chest still and make an in-breath to the abdomen so your abdomen expands as you breathe in, like a baby's belly. Looks a bit funny, I know, but it's not to show other people, it's for yourself. And then make a passive breath out. Let the air go out by itself. If the air is going out by itself, your tummy shouldn't get harder. Again, breathe into the tummy, chest doesn't move, air goes out by itself. Tummy breathes in, air goes out by itself. Notice it's relaxing, it's what you do when you're asleep. Now, notice the air has not gone fully out. So if you wish to take the air fully out, one of the ways you can do it is by using your forced exhalation muscles. Put your fingers into the soft abdomen. Then, take one hand again on the chest, check the abdomen is soft, go in as far as you can with your fingers. So the fingers are deep into your tummy without hurting yourself. Then breathe into the tummy, pause, let the air out passively, tummy is still soft. Now exhale fully by pulling the tummy into the spine without lifting the chest. Make the tummy go in and make it hard. Keep the tummy in and keep it hard. Keep the tummy in and hard. Now try and breathe into your tummy without letting it go soft. And notice what happens is either you can't do it or the chest starts to breathe or you cheat and your tummy expands. You see, just like the active movements we did before, when one muscle turns on, 
the opposite muscle turns off. So in this case, the muscle we were trying to use is our breathing in muscle, the diaphragm. It's the breathing into the abdomen muscle, the diaphragm. So when you forcefully exhale into the abdomen, the forceful abdominal exhalation muscles switch on and they make the diaphragm, the inhalation muscle, turn off. So you can no longer breathe in a relaxed way. So is that the only way you can tighten your abdomen? The answer is no. There are many ways to tighten the abdomen, but the one you did just then is the least useful because it prevents natural breathing. So this time, feel the abdomen, push your fingers in, and then from there, do like we did for the preparation to the upward facing dog. Bend the knee slightly, push the pubic bone forward, and lean back, lifting the collarbone, chin in. And notice the tummy pushes out against the fingers. Can you feel that? So the tummy became firm. Let go of your hands. Relax. Relax means check the fingers can move, check the shoulders can move, check the neck can move, check your tummy can breathe. Can your tummy breathe? The answer is yes. Check is the tummy still firm? Answer is yes. So you've learned uh, to find a way then of creating firmness in your core without creating tension. And there are many ways of doing this, which we can discuss perhaps later. But the essence is breathe naturally. Always check you can breathe naturally. And if you can't breathe naturally, you lose the ability to do most exercises. Now, the fourth principle we work with is moving with flow. So let's try a couple of examples of moving with flow. Say, for example, you're doing upward facing, downward facing dog. It's a little bit like bending forward and backward. Does it feel good? For some people, yes, but for many it causes discomfort. Let's go from forward bend to back bend. Bring your arms forward and down so your spine's bending forward. Now make a back bend. Make a forward bend. Make a back bend. Make a forward bend. Back bend, forward bend, back bend, forward bend, and stop. That, if you tried it with us, you'll feel is quite jarring. It's a little bit like driving a car forward and backward. It's a little bit jarring on the body and it takes a lot of energy. So rather than going back and forth from one extreme to the other, move in a circular way. So try this. This includes forward bend and back bend, but it also includes two linking movements. This creates flow. Bring from this position the arms backward and up. Then bring the arms forward and up. Lengthen your spine, hips down, arms up, and arms forward and down. Keep your eyes on me. Back lengthening, front lengthening, trunk lengthening, front shortening. Lower back lengthen, upper back lengthen. Belly expand, chest expand. Bend the elbows. Sitting bones down, arms forward and up. Pubic bone down, arms forward and down. And my double click means continue. Keep the eyes on me, check the fingers can move, the tummy can breathe, the shoulders can move, and what you can find is you're doing the forward bend, you're linking to a backward bend, but there's no jarring effect because the movements are circular. Now once again, go to forward bend, backward bend, forward bend, backward bend. Notice it's much more jarring. And now forward bend, back lengthen, Front lengthen, trunk lengthen, front shorten. And this is smooth. It gives you energy rather than draining you of energy. And this movement also makes your body breathe. You don't have to tell yourself to breathe. The breath happens by itself. Release. Can you feel the difference? This is moving with flow. Let's try one more example. This example, I want you to see what it's like to do twist to left, twist to right, side bend to left, side bend to right, which are similar in that they're going one direction, opposite direction. It's staccato, it's linear, it drains energy, and it can potentially damage the body. Be careful. So from this position, arms out, twist to left, then twist to right. Twist left, twist right. Keep doing it. Slower is safer, but notice even slow, there's an abrupt break, a stop, and you have to accelerate and break, accelerate, break, and it takes energy. And if you do it faster, be careful, it can actually damage some people's backs, so be careful. 
Now stop. That is jarring. It's like we're doing one twist one side, one twist another side. Now compare with side bending. So I'd like you to lengthen the right side, lengthen the left side, lengthen the right side, lengthen the left side, and continue. Right side, left side, right side, left side. Keep going. And notice again, it feels jarring. It's stopping, starting, breaking, accelerating, stop. And that also is not just jarring, energy taking, it could hurt some people. So rather than doing linear movements going back and forth, you f uh, make them link and you move in smooth curves in three-dimensional space, which can be done in many ways, and one of them is to link those two movements together. So from this position, I want you to lengthen the right side. Now, twist to the right side. Lengthen the left side, twist to the left side. Lengthen the right side, twist to the right side. Lengthen the left side, twist to the left side. And keep mo going. And then notice that there's no jarring. That actually, like this, you can either go slower or faster but it doesn't feel like it's jarring. Now compare again. Twist to right, twist to left, twist to right, twist to left. Side bend left, side bend right. This takes energy, it takes work, and it's jarring. Now again, like that. Side bend, twisting. It's a little bit like doing backstroke swimming. A little bit like swimming backstroke. And with this, although so is safer, you can actually go quite fast and it doesn't feel jarring at all. And what happens is you make blood flow. Now from that position, take your legs a little bit wider and pause here, which is twisting to the left, sorry, to the right, and side bending to the left. This actually becomes this posture. Then come back up. Then from that position, twist to the right side. This is the simple version of this posture. Then come back up, lengthen the left side, and again we're in this posture. Twist to the left side, and we're in Parvita Parshvokanasan. So actually what we're doing is Parshvokanasan, Parvita Parshvokanasan, Parshvokanasan, etc. like that. So this is giving you the simple version of these poses, and notice it makes you warm without your heart racing. So these are the four basic principles then. Move actively, move from the core, breathe naturally, and move with flow. One last thing. Most yoga poses have one part of the body touching another part of the body. So when one part of the body touches another, it's important that you offer resistance. Resistance exercise. Resistance exercise means you're in one position and you're trying to do the opposite thing which already is confusing. So I suggest that for most newer people, don't do resistance exercise. But if you're going to do it, understand that it also must take place from the core. So I want you to feel this simple exercise. Lean on the right leg, come to the left toe tip. Then from there, lengthen the back of the body. Stay there. Then from there, if comfortable, lift up the left knee, lifting the pubic bone first, knee up second. Now hold your left hand onto the, in front of the left knee, just in front of it. Now feel your tummy with your fingers. If you lean back a bit, you'll feel the tummy is firm. Can you feel that? Now hold the left knee, and the tummy tends to go soft. Let go of the left knee, the tummy tends to go firm. So in a way, you've lost what you gained by holding the knee. Hold the knee. And obviously now, the abdomen works less. So how can you make it work more? Well, don't just hold the knee. Pull with the arms and push away with the knee. So hands pull, knee pushes. Now that makes your arms stronger. That makes your hips stronger. Can you feel the difference? Now release it. The benefits of holding one part of the body to another is not that you just collapse what you gained, or you collapsed what you did when you got there, or how to get there, but you progress. So this sensation of having the core active should not be lost. It just must change. So what I want you to do is sense what would happen if you really pulled the arms in and the knee away? And the answer is, if in this position your knee was pushing away and your arms pulling, 
what would happen is your arms would end up pulling right back. Your knee would push away and go right back. And you'd be in that position, which is bending backwards. And the bending backwards we saw works better is if you expand the belly than the chest. So if we're doing resistance exercise, don't just pull with the arms, resist with the knee. Expand the belly to pull with the arms. And it's as if you're in this position, but you're going to try and do that. So let's try the same leg again. So this from the position. Lean on the right leg, come to the left toe tip. Pubic bone up, belly down, relax. Pubic bone up, knee up, perhaps lift, relax. Bring the knee in close if you can. Then hold the knee, bring the knee in closer, lean back. Now don't just pull with the arm, resist with the knee. Make the belly push forward and up to pull with the arms. Pull the shoulders back. Now push the pubic bone down and forward to push the knee away. Belly forward and up, pull with the arms. Pubic bone down and forward, push away with the knee. Breathe into the abdomen. Now release the knee closer again, come back down. Did that feel different? That's stronger. Just check it's stronger. Do the opposite movement. Get rid of natural breathing. I want you to exhale fully, pull your belly button to the spine, and then grab the knee. With your belly held to the spine, keep the tummy in tight. Now push with the arm, with the knee, pull with the arms. And this very little power now, release, come back down. Can you feel the difference? It feels like all the work comes to the arms and the legs, but there's no support. So finish with the one that feels right. Knee bent. Spine lengthen, knee up when comfortable, hold the knee if comfortable, bring the knee in close, and not just pull with the arms, not just push with the knee. Make the belly go forward and up to pull with the arms. Push the pubic bone down and forward to push away with the knee. Now breathe into your abdomen. Now you're resisting actively from the core. Then pull the knee in close, flow to release back down. Again, it's move actively from the core with natural breathing and flow. Let's try the last side to finish. So come onto your right toe tip. Then from that position, hold the abdomen with your left hand and then lift up the right hip. Lean back slightly, you'll feel the abdomen firms, but you should be able to breathe there. Now, if you hold the right knee, the abdomen wants to go soft. If you let go, it goes firm. But can you learn to keep it firm whether you're holding or not? Okay, that's the trick. Now from there, hold the knee. Pull with the arm, push away with the knee. And if that's all you do, it might be something, but now try and breathe into the tummy. Notice the chest starts to expand. So what you want to do is come back down. If you pull with the arm, push away just with the knee, it causes a tension here. So you have to somehow not just let this tense, but move from here. So this time, let's move actively from the core. So you're going to be in this position, but you're going to try and do that. So lean on the left leg, come to right toe tip, back lengthen, pubic bone up, belly down, lift up the knee if you can. Relax. Then bring the knee in close if you can. Then from there, keep the knee closer, bring the knee to touch, armpit and knee touching if you can. And then from that position, lean back. Then make the belly move forward and up and use that to pull with the arms. Breathe into the tummy. Push the pubic bone down and forward. Use that to push away your right knee. Breathe into the pelvic floor, breathe into the tummy. Pull with the arms, push away with the knee, but make it happen by expanding the belly forward and up, pubic bone down and forward. Notice now you can breathe into the abdomen and then release, come back down. It's a different feeling, but just compare. Tantra is about exploring one side and the opposite side. I'm not saying there's right or wrong here, but let's do the easiest way first. Let's try the hardest way now so you see the difference. And I'm going to ask you to lock the core, exhale fully, pull the navel to the spine, and see if you can do the same thing. Probably you won't be able to. Lean on the left leg, come to the right toe tip, lengthen the back of the body, and then tighten the pelvic floor, and exhale, pull the belly into the spine. Then try lift up the knee. It's unnatural breathing, so it won't feel easy to lift up the knee. Now grab the knee, pull it close. Now again, exhale fully, tighten the pelvic floor, tighten the tummy. Now try pull with the arms, resist with the knee. And with the abdomen pull to the spine, try and breathe in, and you'll find it goes to the chest. And that's usually a stressful breath in this case. Then release, come back down. You get a bit heart racing when you do that but it doesn't necessarily make you warmer. It might make you stickier, 
But what you want is to free the energy, not block it. That blocks energy and makes you weaker. So let's finish the right way. Not the right or wrong way, but the way that's less stress. More like yoga, less like a workout. Lengthen the back of the body. Having lengthened the back, lift the pubic bone up. Check your neck can move, fingers can move, tummy can breathe. Lift up if you can. Then from there, take the knee, bring the knee and armpit to touch. Lean back. Now, make the belly expand to use the arms to pull. Push the pubic bone down to push the knee away. Breathe into the abdomen. If you can, knee and shoulder touching. Lean back. So you're in this position. Knee and shoulder touching if you can, then lean back. Now make the belly expand. Now push the pubic bone down and use the belly expansion to pull with the arms. The arms will feel stronger. Push the pubic bone down and forward and the knee, the hip will feel stronger. Breathe into the abdomen. Then lengthen the lower back, upper back. Release and flow down. You can feel the difference. This is moving actively with resistance from the core with natural breathing and flow. So these four principles are the base. But once you use them, you can create posture, movement and breath control that can effectively give you strength without feeling tense. So, uh, increased flexibility without painful stretching. Increased blood flow without the heart racing. Increased energy without having to breathe so much or eat so much. And you'll be able to practice in this way and finish the practice where you'll have more energy than, than the start. Less need for food or sleep which is different to a workout. In the workout, we finish retired, exhausted, stressed, and need food and sleep. That's the way I differentiate it. Look for yoga in your life. Nourish your body. Make it feel good while you're doing it, not afterwards. And you can still get strength, flexibility, fitness, but it can feel good now. And the message you send yourself is a message of sharing energy in a loving, nourishing way. Give that to yourself in your own practice. It's then the message that we want to share with each other in our life. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Bless you. Thank you.